Last year, we opened the doors of the diet clinic again to welcome eight super sizes and eight super skinnies, each with one goal, to kick their bad eating habits to the curb. Over five days, they stepped into one another's shoes and swapped diets. I'd rather have that than this. <sighs> Give me that any day. Overseeing the swap was Dr. Christian Jessen, who forced them to face the realities of what they were doing to their bodies. That was like a snap. Tonight, we're going to see how super skinny Gillian and super sizer Heather got on a year after the cameras stopped rolling. Now, if I have any ice cream, it actually makes me want to be sick, to be quite fair. We'll also look back at four women on the road to recovery battling anorexia. If I clear my plate now, I'll feel quite guilty about that. And we'll see how Anna Richardson and her team of flab fighters tried to beat the bulge. So who's up for a gorge on Cheddar Gorge? Welcome to Super Size versus Super Skinny, one year on. Last year, the Diet Den welcomed super skinny single mum Gillian Russell from Inverness. An average woman of five foot three inches should weigh around eight and a half stone. Not a big number, is it? 96 pounds. At only six stone eight, Gillian is almost two stone underweight. 24 year old Gillian is in dire need of help. She's starving her body with her dangerous eating habits and the consequences of this are deadly serious. I have had health problems to do with my weight. Um, I've not had period in around 18 months. I've been in hospital as well to do with uh, low potassium in my blood. I've got stomach problems to do with my weight and just I'm always cold too. Now getting the health problems that I'm getting, I do really need to do something. Gillian has the body of a child, and she eats like one too. I'm a really fussy eater. I don't like chicken, I don't like dairy. A lot of things I can think about and put myself off, and a lot of things I've never tried, but I, I just know I don't like them. <laughs> With most foods off the menu, there is one thing that is guaranteed to fill Jill. She glugs down litres of fizzy diet drink all day long, which makes her feel full enough to pop. She has diet fizz for breakfast and lunch, but as the mum of two teeny tots, she feels pressure to eat something with them at dinner time. I'll try and encourage them by having something. But she only ever manages a kiddie-sized portion. Just tell me, first of all, how do you think this has happened? Like, bad eating practices, and then they've got into habits, right. and then it's just really difficult to change because I'm so used to not eating, then I've got the feeling where I don't recognise hunger anymore. Her eating issues need to be tackled, and there's only one thing for it. Hi. It's time to call in the heavy artillery. How are you Pleased doing? to meet you. Come Very along well. here. Meet 26 stone supersizer Philippa from Yorkshire. As a 48-year-old nurse, she knows better than most the dangers of overeating. But when it comes to grub guzzling, this nosher just can't seem to get enough. I just love food. I love cooking, I love preparing food, and I love eating food. And I like nice food. Two extreme diets and two shocking polar physiques. With an 18-stone difference between them, they're about to swap their diets in a bid to teach each other a hard lesson in food and nutrition. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. <laughs> I'm really pleased to meet you at last. <laughs> well, I think, actually, my arm is the same size as your leg. <laughs> That's incredible. I don't know how elite what she probably eats, but we'll see. To add girth to Jill and take fat from Phil, their diets are swapping for five days and they're about to find out what's going to be on the menu as they come face to face with their shocking weekly consumptions. Ready? Let's start with breakfast. Breakfast. Let's move on to lunch. It's not really very impressive, is it? Half a sandwich. Let's see what you have for dinner, then. A small quiche. This is a bit of tomato pasta salad. Your four-year-old probably eats more than that. What's this, Gillian? 
diet drinks. And just look at how much there is. When you didn't see any food going in at breakfast time, a glass of diet fizzy drink. About 12 litres a week. I would call this an addiction, really. It's speechless. This is what you're going to be now living on for the next well, week. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> With her busy lifestyle, Gillian should be consuming 2,000 calories a day, but she's getting a pitiful 350. This means that she only eats one and a half days' worth of calories in a week. That's a staggering under-eat of five and a half days. Yours is very bad, but this is not necessarily going to be any better, all right? Breakfasts. Here we go. Banana, toast and butter. What do you think of her breakfast? I don't like her nothing. You don't like any of that? Well, that doesn't really surprise me, but it's a darn sight better than your breakfast, isn't it? Let's move on to lunch. Lots of salad, pasta, fish and chips, vegetable soup, and then pate and toast. Yeah. Do you like pate and toast? What else? I'm feeling sick, just seeing it all mushed together and just thinking that's what it's like inside your body. It's their first night in the feeding clinic, and Jill's about to get her first dose of dumper truck-sized tucker. On the menu for Gillian, an enormous bowl of chilli and some mango for pud, followed by cheese and biscuits. But the chilli is receiving a frosty reception, and reactions speak louder than words. And it's not just the taste of food that turns Gillian's tiny tum. The noises of eating drive her mad, too. I don't like it when it's so quiet, because I can hear myself as well. <laughs> You can hear chewing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know like chewing? Mm -mm. I've just had the first fail and I feel really sick. I'm not used to eating in such quietness as well, so it was, it was difficult to hear, like, chewing and I didn't like it at all. Coming up, we meet Heather, the super-sized right. snacker from last series. You are exactly 280 pounds. It's a lot. Anna Richardson and her band of flab fighters take on the Battle of the Bulge. Go! <laughs> and we follow the four brave women who fought back against anorexia. I have not had a sandwich for about two years now, so eating a big sandwich a day, it's a big challenge. Last year, I took the Battle of the Bulge to the streets. Well, actually, the hills, the hedges and a car wash to show that if you wanted your sneaky treats, you had to pay the price. Welcome to my flab fighting club. A third of all adults in the UK are said to be on a permanent diet at any one time. But 86% of us women put the weight back on again. Let's face it, diets are hard work. So, I'm opening my own diet club. These seven ladies are serial dieters desperate to slim down, but who always fall off the dreaded diet wagon. I've tried a number of diets. I've tried the herbal tablets, the Atkins, starving myself, laxatives. I've basically been on a diet on and off since I was about 11. Pretty tired of them now. 
So in my diet club, the rules are simple. Stick to a diet plan we've devised, which will allow them to have their vices, but they'll have to burn off the extra calories with exercise. So, why can't we stick to our diets? Reason number one, chocolate. I eat chocolate because it replaces my lack of sex. If I'm feeling a bit low or I'm tired when I come home from work, my biggest downfall is chocolate. I've got a very high sex drive, so I probably eat two or three bars a day. Eat 100 grams of the sweet stuff and you're looking at around 530 calories. But if our girls want to commit the chocolate crime, then they have to learn to do the time. Today, our dieting dames are going to be working the red carpet, but not quite in the way they might like. You don't have to be a member of an expensive gym to burn off your guilty pleasures. Simple household chores like vacuuming can burn about 300 calories an hour. So if you want the pleasure of eating your fave chocky bars, just how much vacuuming would you need to do? For a dairy milk whole nut, you'd need to do 54 minutes. A Yorkie bar would be an hour and a quarter's worth of vacuuming to the max. Or you could burn off a Milky Way in just 23 minutes. Being a domestic goddess has never been so tasty. Later on, the girls get cheesed off having to ramble in the rain but then show a little dogged determination to burn off those bickies. Super skinny Gillian tickles the scales at just six stone eight. She's a picky eater consuming a paltry 350 calories a day. She swapped diets with supersized 25 stone six Philippa. Day two and Phil is preparing to launch the day's first food attack. And it's breakfast, so ready, aim, fry. For Phil, it's a diet pot breakfast. But it's Gillian who's got a problem with her bumper brekkie. What don't you like about egg yolk? The texture. I've never liked egg yolk. It spoils a toast. <laughs> Gillian agrees to give the egg a go, but if at first you don't succeed, try... Don't smell it. Just put it in your mouth. Try... And that's not even a mouthful, is it? It's just kind of... <laughs> so silly. And try again. And she's cracked it. Just chew it and the toast will take over. It was quite um, tough because the foods that I don't like, but I tried them and I did eat much more than I would usually eat, so I think I've done well in that respect that I've probably eaten what I would usually eat in a day. It's the start of a new day, and even though Gillian knows she has to make changes, it's not going to be so easy. It wouldn't be so bad if it didn't have milk in it. <laughs> Gillian's dislike of most calcium-rich foods means she rarely eats them, which throws up major concerns about the health of her bones. I think this puts her at a real risk of osteoporosis, so I'm sending her for a bone scan to see if my concerns are justified. If I do have osteoporosis and the results are positive, I'll be absolutely devastated because I'm only 24 and to know that I've been doing that to my body for so long, it's quite scary. The potential consequences of Gillian's gross under-eating are shocking and Dr Jessen hopes in forcing her to face them, she'll begin to see the realities of her terrible diet. Those ribs are very, very, very prominent. There's nothing covering them at all. I never realised you could see the spine in it. It's so prominent, because there's nothing covering it. This could be all that's horrible. I sent you for a bone scan. Now, your spine is OK. Mm -hmm. Your hips are absolutely not OK. Your hip bones are similar to about a 60-year-old lady's hip bones. It's quite thin, I see. Even though I knew the likelihood was my bones would be bad, you know, you had the naivety that it won't happen to me, blah, 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 and it's a definite shock. What's scaring you most? Just to have the hips of a 60-year-old that's older than my mum, and it's like five years' time if I carried on, what would they be like? I can't believe I've done that to myself. I want to be there for my kids growing up, so it's got to change. 
It's the end of the week for Gillian and Philippa, and armed with their tailor-made eating right, plans, so our diet swappers nice. head home, ready to turn the old eating negatives into new forward-thinking positives. Last year, we followed the lives of four women, Rachel, Rebecca, Elaine and Fiona, each battling to wrestle back control of their lives from the grip of anorexia. Rachel is aged 21, 5 foot 3 and weighs just 5 stone 12. Once I lost athletics, I think I lost a part of me. I was just kind of just left on a lurch and my new obsession in life went on to food and I used to start restricting what I ate. Rebecca is aged 21, 5 foot 5 and weighs just 7 and a half stone. It's much easier for me to deal with if my food's in packets. I know there's a certain amount of calories within that packet and I trust it not to be, be any more. Elaine is aged 35, 5 foot 5 and weighs 7 stone 4. I've damaged my body quite a lot over the years and I think the chances of me having kids, well, I've been told, are very minimal. The eating disorders left me without a normal life. And lastly, Fiona, aged 27, is 5 foot 10 and weighs 7 stone 9. Restricting my food intake and controlling my eating made me feel good about myself. I became very, very good at losing weight and it just escalated out of control. To help these young women on the road to recovery, we've been working with renowned eating disorder specialist, Dr Peter Rowan. So at what point does dieting become not normal behaviour and slipping into anorexia? I suppose that the crucial issue with it, really, is when it takes off so that you're predominantly thinking about that all the time. You're descending into a world which is dominated by issues to do with body weight and eating behaviour. Like most anorexics, these four girls all share an obsession with the calorific content of food. Eating disorder dietitian Ursula Philpot has worked with many anorexics and is working with the women to help them overcome their underlying fear of food. They also can misinterpret a lot of physiological symptoms and really my job is to help clarify those, to help them trust food again really. One place where the group's distorted views of food manifests itself is the supermarket. Thoughts about being greedy or what other people might perceive as um, you know, them being greedy for having more than a couple of items in the trolley, they'd find quite difficult. On this visit, the girls are encouraged to talk about their food phobias. I don't actually eat cheese, really. It's high in calories and full of fat. Bread is very difficult for me to eat. I haven't eaten bread for a very long time. As is common with anorexia sufferers, even the foods that do make their list must pass strict regulations, and the absence of a familiar item causes distress. Um, that was slightly concerning. Um, <laughs> the slice of brown bread that I'd normally have isn't here, so now it'd be a case of finding which one of these would be my next best option. That's 53, so that wouldn't be an option. 120, definitely not an option, that. For Rebecca, food shopping is a numbers game. One, two, three, four, tell me that you love me. 100 grams of this is 260. That's got 17. I just wish that I could walk into a supermarket and just pick anything up, not have to worry about the labels, just things that I'd enjoyed. Thanks, bye. Yeah, bye bye. Six four, 66 grams. With the shopping finally completed, the next task is to address the group's distorted ideas on portion size. We're here now to look at um, increasing the calories that you've, you've had in your lunch and making it more of a usual lunch. Ursula shows the girls a healthy portion for lunch. Cover the bread with a, a reasonably thick slice. It's just more than I'd usually eat in the mm -hmm. day. It's like breaking the habit of either skipping lunch or just having a salad. The girls now have to make their own cheese sandwich, but still need Ursula's guidance to break old habits. So Fiona, just looking at the end there, yours is actually quite thin at that end. Do you want to just put a little bit more on just down this end and that's it? Sandwiches made, but the hardest part is still to come, eating them. And just let me know any thoughts or, or feelings you've got. OK, I've noticed that before I ate it, I squashed it. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I've noticed <laughs> that. that as well. 
it is very common for anorexids to have methodical ways of eating a meal. Squashing food down, hiding parts of the meal, cutting it up to small amounts, using a teaspoon to eat with, and breaking small amounts off are all habits they find hard to break. They have managed to finish their sandwiches, but Rebecca is still struggling to leave a clean plate. If I clear my plate mm -hmm. now, I'll feel quite guilty about that, and that's when the, the whole anxiety and punishment will set in. Although all the girls still have a long way to go, just finishing a cheese sandwich is a huge step for them on their road to recovery. Today, I do feel nicely full after that sandwich, and I presume that's how you're meant to feel after lunch. I haven't had that feeling for quite a while. I just feel content and uh, quite satisfied, really, and, and pleased that I'd managed to eat the cheese sandwich and actually enjoy it. Later on, the women face up to how anorexia has changed the way they view their bodies. Pampering is something that I never, ever do for myself. It's been a year since we first saw supersized Heather Tilney walk into the diet den. Time's moved on, but back then she was in dire need of help. I love food. I love trying different foods, unless it's vegetables. I like stuff to be like a party in my mouth. Heather, a full-time working mum, lives with husband Richard and their daughter Madison. But while this call centre worker loves her nosh, she hates cooking. I don't find cooking in any way, shape or form entertaining at all. Heather's love of processed comfort food started when she was young and now her poor eating habits are being passed on to her 16-month-old daughter, Madison. She wants the food that we eat. She won't eat her own food anymore. I think because Heather doesn't like vegetables, she gives Madison what she eats, and I don't think that's a good thing at all. I don't want her to be like me. I really don't want her to get bullied at school. If she goes to school fat, it's because I've done it. Nobody else. I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to be the skinny girl that's inside that I keep shutting up with chocolate. Heather's mammoth-sized appetite is about to be curbed by taking on her partner's minuscule meals. Step forward, aspiring glamour model Charlotte. Super skinny Charlotte is obsessed with her looks, to the complete detriment of her diet. Food's just not that important to me. I'd rather think about my nails or my tan. But despite wanting the body of a woman, her diet is that of a child. When I look down on the plate, I know that there's not enough there. I think it is quite embarrassing. These two young women are destroying their bodies with extreme diets at opposite ends of the scale. And with nearly 14 stone difference between them, the signs are obvious. Heather's thigh is almost six inches bigger than Charlotte's waist. They're about to swap diets for five days. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. I've never seen anybody so skinny. That's going to change, definitely. I had no fat pinch, and she could just grab it like a whole handful and say, like, which bit do you want? It's quite scary to look at somebody so tiny, and I'm just dreading exactly what it is she eats to stay so small. I'm really frightened. <laughs> Wait no longer, ladies. It's time for them to come face to face with their own shocking weekly food intake. Charlotte, we're going to start with you. Yeah. Cereal to start with. Toast. Let's see what you have for lunch. Usually just have one biscuit with a cup of tea. Let's have a look at your dinners. That's the first lot of veg we've had in the tube. Dinner. That is your week's worth of dinner and your week's worth of lunch and your week's worth of breakfast in there. But it's just really not enough to get you through the day, is it? I'm beginning to panic at how my body is going to survive on that small amount of food. Heather, let's start with your breakfast. That looks like a traditional English fry-up breakfast. <coughs> wow, it's like a French baguette, and that's a breakfast thing. Charlotte, that is 30 sausage rolls. And this is fizzy cola, so it's high sugar. High in calorie, just not really quite what you need, given the size of your lunches and the size of your dinners. Heather is gorging on five times more calories than Charlotte. By taking in a mammoth 4,100 a day, she's eating twice as much as she needs to. It's an overeat of seven days a week. 
It's the first morning of the diet swap and Heather's taking Charlotte out for one of her favourite gut busters, a full English breakfast. The thought of it just makes me feel really full up already. I wish I could feel full up by the thought of food. So what will Heather think of this pitiful portion? One slice of toast, a banana and a probiotic yoghurt. Are you going to eat your banana yet? Not yet, no, I'm absolutely starving. I'm trying to make it last. I'm looking at how much it is that I'm struggling to eat when I realise how much I really do go through. And whilst Heather's left to count the cost of her fatty fry-up later on, Anna Richardson's flab fighters discover new ways to burn off their high-calorie treats. Walking in dogs? We see how four determined women took one step further away from anorexia. Today it's just shown that you can just focus on yourself in, in a positive way. And we'll see how much of a difference the swap made to Gillian and Heather one year on. I do feel like a completely different person. Under the guidance of eating specialist Dr. Peter Rowan and dietitian Ursula Philpott, we've been following four ordinary women struggling to wrestle back their lives from the grip of anorexia. After looking at their attitudes towards food, we've turned our attention to how they view their own bodies. Approximately 80% of anorexia sufferers engage in compulsive exercise. My relationship with exercise is absolutely obsessive. I don't go a day without exercising. My exercise, in a way, was worse than my relationship with food. It's important for the girls to exercise in a safe and healthy way. The reason I've asked the girls to come today and do a yoga class is because it's a really good activity for somebody with an eating disorder. It's skills-based rather than being goal-orientated, so you're not counting calories all the time they're working on a skill. It's time-limited. There's a definite start and a finish time, so people can't just keep going and going. It's fun and it's sociable and it's quite low impact, so it's actually good for bones as well. See if you can inhale your fingertips towards the ceiling. I've kind of felt that exercise has been something that you've had to always go full pelt at. So now seeing it on this more calmer, soothing level was something that I took a bit of adjusting to, but I feel more refreshed now, so it's a lot better. The yoga session has calmed the girls' minds in terms of exercise, but next they'll have to confront their body image as they head to a spa for a back massage. Anorexia sufferers often hide their bodies away under layers of baggy clothing and avoid close physical contact, so today will be a giant step. 
anorexia leaves sufferers so used to punishing their body, they completely forget how to indulge it. Pampering is something that I never, ever do for myself at all. For Fiona, who holds down three jobs and several sporting activities, the idea of self-indulgence is a revelation. I've never really thought to myself that I will treat myself and have a massage or go and have a facial. Hopefully I will come away having learned that it is OK for me to pamper myself. Elaine, who has lived with anorexia for 17 years, is not happy to let her mask slip entirely. Even though I'm at a health spa, I chose not to take my makeup off and sort of lay myself completely bare. I tend to kind of keep away from getting intimate with people. It's very strange to have somebody touch my body, but it does feel really nice. The spa day has been tough for the girls, but it's also been rewarding and a crucial step towards recovery. Later, we reveal how far they've come with a farewell meal together. Super-sized 22-year-old Heather and super-skinny 19-year-old Charlotte are two young women who have agreed to swap their polar extreme eating habits. It's day two of the diet swap, and lunch for Charlotte is a baguette bulging with tuna mayo. While for Heather, well, it really does take the biscuit. When I first saw what my lunch was, I wanted to slap her <laughs> for eating such a ridiculous lunch. Without swearing, <laughs> bleeping hungry. Seems like the solitary biscuit is going to do nothing to placate Heather's hunger. Come dinner time, I'm going to be ready to rip her arm off and eat whatever meat's on there. Instead of Charlotte's arm, Heather will be chomping on two small lamb chops, two potatoes and veg. But she'd rather have a bowl of... Chocolate-covered rice cereals. Drowned in full-fat milk and in case Charlotte isn't sweet enough, there's tons of sugar on top. Heather must stick to Charlotte's habit of leaving a large chunk of her dinner, leaving her chomping at the bit. There's any more left on there. Breakfast, and it's the same story. While Charlotte gets to chow down on another bumper-sized baguette, working mother Heather is faced with a Spartan slice of toast. The slim pickings have finally pushed her over the edge. I actually feel sick because I'm that hungry. I feel like just screaming and shouting and pulling me hair out at the minute because I'm just angry at everything. And I hate feeling that. This is f***ing horrible. Heather is experiencing the feeling of true hunger for the first time in her life and she's finding the emotional effects hard to deal with. So she needs a boost to keep her motivated and to keep her heading in the right direction. So to boost Heather's meagre breakfast, Dr Christian's adding a side order of surprise. I think this is a golden opportunity for you. I'm really concerned about your health. I'm also concerned about Madison's health. I love you so much, and I'm frightened I'm going to lose you. And Maddie won't have a mum. When Heather was younger, what sort of things did she eat? Unfortunately, the wrong things. Um, I, too, was a working mum. Um, we had all the things like fish fingers and the chips, and we had the deep flat fryer. Don't want that for Madison. I think your mother's done something quite incredible today to be able to come forward and say, OK, I may not have fed you the right stuff, but don't you make the same mistake. I think that's amazing. It was such a shock. I never expected my mum and Maddie to turn up. Now I'm in the right frame of mind that I want to do this, then I will be taking on board what she said. With the day's events weighing heavily on Heather, there's one final meal in the feeding clinic, and it's a proper dinner. Charlotte, on the other hand, is faced with the last supper of 30 sausage rolls. Not exactly a healthy, balanced meal. Let's get going. Despite its tiny size, Heather's dinner is a different story. With complex carbohydrates in the mashed potato, protein in the minced beef, and essential vitamins and minerals in the fresh vegetables. As the end of the swap nears, oh, Heather realises just how extreme her food habits were. Everything that's going on has made me realise what it is that I'm doing to not only me, but Maddie as well. It's the end of the swap.
time for Dr Christian to give Heather and Charlotte their 12-week healthy eating plans. So everything that you need now for your diet plans are all in here, and I have to say I'm really looking forward to seeing you two in 12 weeks' time. Me, Maddie and Richard will certainly be changing our eating habits, and there's going to be a lot more home-cooked food. It's like a weight's being lifted, knowing that I'm going to go home and she's not going to be like me. Earlier on, my flab fighters donned their pennies and got stuck into some housework to burn off the chocks. But that was only the beginning. Next, another guilty pleasure, cheese. I love cheese. I'll eat cheese on pizzas. I'll eat cheese and tomato sandwiches. I'll eat cheese on toast. Just love cheese. To burn off 150 grams of Tracy's favourite cheese, my fat-fighting fillies will be hiking for an hour and 20 minutes around Britain's largest gorge. And waiting for them at the top is a tempting cheese-tastic treat. So, will they bank or binge? Once we get to the top of the gorge, you can then decide whether or not you want to eat a little bit of cheese or whether you want to bank your calories and basically use that to lose some weight. All right? You're not looking very happy about that, are you? <laughs> And it's a whopping 655 calories which they'll be burning. I feel like a giant condom. You look like that. Thank you. Hey up, Trace. I've never seen you move so fast. Huh? Are you after that cheese or what? Oh, yeah. oh blimey. Smell it. Look. If you are partial to a chunk of cheese, then weigh it up before you pack it in. For a 150 gram slab of Edam, you'll be hiking for around one hour. A sneaky slice of Stilton will cost you around a one-hour, ten-minute hike. And for Tracy's favourite cheddar cheese, you will be hiking for about one hour and twenty minutes. But after all that climbing, what will the girls choose to do? Bank their calories or binge on cheddar? So who's that for a gorge on Cheddar Gorge? Who wants them? <laughs> Me. Oh, oh you <laughs> yeah, have who has a little bit? I don't have no more. You never oh. Who doesn't want to have it? Me. Who wants to bank the calories? Me. Yeah? Me. Hey, up. You've had a little nibble of yours, haven't yeah. you? This is really good. You're all wanting to bank your calories. Guilt. I love it. <laughs> One week later, and it was walkies of a different kind. To combat their cookie cravings, I set them off for a bit of fun with man's best friend. Walking a dog in a park could burn up to 235 calories, whereas tramping with your pooch hikes it up to over 340 calories an hour. To dunk a rich tea bicky at 36 calories, you'd have to poodle with your poodle for just six minutes. But you'd have to hike your hide for 13 minutes to save the flavour of just one chocolate digestive at 81 calories. Because we have just done an hour's walk with our dogs, which was quite strenuous, we've burnt around 342 calories. So, because we've done that exercise, we can have a treat. Do you want one? <laughs> I, do, I do, but I'm not going to. Why? Just because you, you, you feel like... I feel I've achieved something today and I, I don't want to uh, disrupt what I've just done. Anybody else? A resounding no. It seems all the girls are happy to bank the calories. And after a couple of weeks of ditching the treats, has the hard work paid off? I've lost a pound. I've lost two. I've lost two pounds! <laughs> I've lost... Three and a <gasps> Losing all that weight means that in the first three weeks, our girls have lost a waist flattening two stone, 11 pounds. But the battle's only just begun, as every guilty pleasure comes with a price. Was all that cake eating worth this pain? It's been six weeks since super skinny Gillian left the diet den. Gillian's bulking up regime involves getting more calcium in her diet, eating three regular meals and three healthy snacks a day, and replacing fizzy drinks with more nutritional smoothies. But it isn't just about calories. During the diet swap, Gillian discovered that her hips were like that of a 60-year-old woman, so she's been exercising to strengthen her bones. It's the final day of reckoning, and Gillian and swap partner Philippa are back to see if the last three months have changed their weighty issues. <laughs> They've both worked hard at their diet plans, and it's time to find out if it's paid off. You, madam, have lost three stone and two pounds. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> 
in wow. three months is superb. You have put on a stone and two pounds. You have. That is absolutely amazing. Okay. A stone and two pounds. You're happy with that? I am delighted at that. You're now a normal, you're a healthy BMI, which means all those horrible things that I was nagging you about will be changing already. By taking on a new approach to life, Gillian took on a whole new set of curves. And later, we'll see if she managed to keep it up. Meanwhile, supersizer Heather was putting her own life-changing plan into action. Heather's plan involves reducing her portion sizes, taking food into work so she's not tempted by the high-fat salt options in the staff canteen, and more home cooking so she's not reliant on microwave meals and her local takeaway. Has all the hard work paid off? Before she jumps on the scales, Heather gets a chance to catch up with fellow diet swapper, Charlotte. Oh, my God! You look amazing. They've both worked hard at their new healthy, balanced diet plans, but has it paid off? Previously, Charlotte weighed a dangerously low six stone three pounds. Now, you're a whopping six stone 13. <gasps> You've put on 10 pounds, which is extraordinary. Why? Heather, it's your turn. Comfort eater Heather weighed in at a morbidly obese 20 stone. You are 18 stone 10. <laughs> You've gone down one stone four pounds. Are you happy? That's fantastic. Heather has also lost two inches from her waist and an inch from each thigh and arm. My little sister, she's like, oh, my God, look at your arms. And I'm like, what's the matter? She says, your bingo wings have shrunk. I even feel a bit sexy as well. <laughs> you both look healthy and glowing, and it's really obvious that you've taken on board all that advice. It's working for you spectacularly well. The future for me is to stick to my diet plan and keep the family on the diet plan and lose even more weight. Coming up, our anorexia sufferers seize back control of their lives by tackling their biggest fear. I wouldn't normally have something with a sauce. It goes against everything that was normal to me. And we see if the hard work over the last year has paid off for Gillian and Heather. I seem to get quite a lot of male attention, which I, I never expected. Over the last series, we followed four women whose lives had been blighted by anorexia nervosa. With specialist guidance, the group underwent step-by-step -step challenges to help them take back control of their lives. Today, they face their biggest challenge yet, to order and eat several courses at a restaurant. For anorexia sufferers, eating out and relinquishing control of the contents of the exact meal they're eating can be a massive step to recovery. Rachel embraces the task wholeheartedly. And for me, I'm going to challenge myself and have a vegetable and pesto lasagna. 
pasta has been my fear food. That is one thing I cut out. Can I have the smoked haddock for a main course? Elaine is embracing her newfound food freedom. I wouldn't normally have something with a sauce. Goes against everything that was normal to me, so I'm looking forward to tasting it. Although Fiona was eating at meal times, her portion sizes were extremely small. Now that's changing. If you compare the fish element of what I've got today, the portion size compared to what I had, there Absolutely. is a big Make difference. difference. This meal has got Rebecca to face up to her food fears and overcome them. It's just yeah. a huge step, and I'm just so proud of, I think, myself and everybody here that we've actually, you know, we can do this. They even stretch themselves to try dessert and are enjoying the sweetness of life once more. I feel as though I've been given a second chance, <laughs> really enjoying life again and just seeing all the good things that I can do. Physically, I just feel so, so much better. I've got energy, I just feel alive. There is life after an eating disorder. Life doesn't actually stop. Life begins when you say goodbye to the eating disorder. I don't want to lose any more of my life just having all these hang-ups and issues around food. I'm absolutely ready to say goodbye to anorexia. <laughs> the positive news is that a year down the line, the group are all trying to keep up a healthy diet, and although it can still be a struggle, they've hopefully managed to put anorexia behind them. It's been 12 months since we last saw Gillian, and it's been a year of change. The biggest change since leaving the house is um, my energy levels. I've got more energy to play with the girls. I've got more energy to have fun and just be like a normal 20-something-year-old. Having survived on a steady stream of fizzy drinks, this now bonnie lass is on a much healthier regime. I'm eating so much more now. I'm able to enjoy some foods and start getting the pleasure out of some foods. Now I don't substitute fizzy drinks for meals. Now I take actual calories in. My six-year-old always tells me if I have fizzy drinks, she always gives me a rouse saying, Mummy, that's not good, your bones are rotting. <laughs> that shocking revelation after the scan has stayed with Gillian, and she's determined to turn things round. I've been working hard to put that right by putting the weight on and keeping it on, exercise, increasing the calcium in my diet, and hopefully I'll have done some good. Now I'm exercising, I'm, I've got a goal to run the London Marathon next year. Gillian's really starting to feel the benefits. As my weight's increased, so is my confidence levels. I feel so much happier and more content with myself. I'm more confident to go out and do things for myself. I feel more womanly than I did. I don't look like a 10-year-old boy anymore. <laughs> a year ago, I was wearing 8 to 9 to 10 clothes, which is the size of this, which is scary, because it's not that far off what my daughter wears now, and she's only six. She's wearing age 7 to 8. But these days, the high street's her oyster. I can go into any shop and just get a normal size eight, and it's so much better. I do feel like a completely different person. It's been an up and down year for Heather. Shortly after leaving the feeding clinic, she split with Maddie's father. But for the first time, she's not resorting to old habits. Normally when something traumatic happens, I tend to turn to food, um, just because it makes me feel better. But instead, this time, um, I've handled it totally different. I've not gone straight to the fridge. And since ditching the convenience food, Heather's using her new kitchen skills. My and Maddie's diet has changed quite drastically. Um, instead of eating processed foods like we used to, um, we try and get fresh vegetables. We have a lot of fruit. I try to cook a bit more as well. I'm not the best chef in the world, but I'm trying, and Maddie loves it. That's a big one. It is a big one, that one, isn't it? Like mother, like daughter. The change in Maddie is amazing. When I look at Maddie, I can see that she's a different child to how she was. Before, she used to be a total nightmare, running riot, whereas now I've got the energy to keep up with her. And I'm really proud because she's not going to go to school now overweight like I was dreading, thinking that she was going to get bullied like I did. Since leaving the diet house, I feel a lot more confident within myself. Um, I'm more confident in my body. It's made her more confident than she ever was before. Her skin is so much better, her mannerisms are so much better. She's a lot better in herself. 
I'm a total different person and I'm actually enjoying life. Whereas before I was I was dreading getting up in the morning. Now I have something to get up for and I thoroughly enjoy it. After a year away from the diet clinic, it's time for the girls to meet up with Dr. Christian. Heather and Gillian were two people who needed to make some major changes to their diet and their lifestyle. So I'm really excited to see how they're doing one year on. It is good to see you again, it really is. It's been a year. Seems like a very short time though to me, but I think there's been big changes. Yeah, there has. Tell me about it. I'm eating better, I've got much more energy. I'm more confident now. It's just a complete life change. It's like I've stepped out of my shoes into someone else's and it's a much better place. Come on in, this is Gillian. Gillian, this is Heather. I mean, you've had a bit of a roller coaster year, haven't you, if we're honest? It's yeah. been ups and downs and things, so it's been difficult. How have you managed to fit in with the whole diet plan? I think the hardest thing was the breakdown in my marriage. And I don't know, my self-confidence was a lot more than it was last, uh, last year. So I think I handled it a lot better than I would have done. And did things slip a little bit then or not? At the minute, I seem to have come to a bit of a, a standstill. But um, I recently started going to the gym and I actually enjoy it. I was quite shocked. The girls need to see how they've got on in terms of numbers. Given the year she's had, Heather's old eating habits would have seen her gain weight. However, she's managed to keep her weight stable at 18 stone 10, which is positive news. And it's positive too for Gillian. She's gained weight and is now eight stone two pounds, which keeps her within a healthy BMI. And that's not the only good news. What I'm really happy to say is we sent you off for a bone scan again, just to check that things were okay. And your bone density where we scanned it this time was normal. What more could a doctor want? That's a success, so I'm delighted. And with you, Heather, this is not a race. You know, you, you clearly are now eating more healthily. You clearly have so much more self-esteem. The gym is the next bit. You're gonna get fitter and you will get healthier. Are you gonna keep this up? Definitely. It is a life-changing thing. I'm never gonna revert back to what I was. And Gillian, what about you? No going back either. I had forgotten how good it feels to feel good. The last 12 months have been so positive. I've changed emotionally and physically and I'm just going to keep going the way I'm going. A lot's happened in the past 12 months. I'm just pleased that I didn't revert back to, to how I used to be. And I've started the gym now, been going about a month, so hopefully we'll start to see the effects of that. Next time on Supersize vs Super Skinny, we'll be catching up with Supersizer Keith and Super Skinny Colin to see if they've managed to keep up their hard work. We'll also be finding out how Lisa Wheeler is getting on, 12 months after her life-changing surgery. I can't eat a lot, but I can still have a life and it's wonderful. Anna Richardson and her band of flab fighters discover new ways to kill the calories. Look at you, Keith!